Uh, the supercharger just went in a million small pieces and I was afraid it was uh, going down to the engine. Can we do a quick update on it? Because yeah. it seems to be in... Yeah, it seems to be in million parts, and it is. Um, from uh, the last time, the car has uh, been on many track days and, and working very, very well uh, until the last track day of the season of 2018. Uh, it was more or less my own fault uh, because I'm over revving uh, the supercharger as it is, uh, and I was chasing a Huracan Performante. Uh, so I was trying to rev harder than probably I should have done because once I hit the rev limiter, uh, the belt on the supercharger uh, just stops. Uh, and I did this for a, uh, lap after lap after lap after lap. And, uh, no Normally I don't do it, but uh, you know it's prestige, you have to be as fast as the others. So the supercharger went uh, bang, uh, so you probably see on the video the big hole in it. I was afraid that the engine was uh, broke as well, because uh, the supercharger just went in a million small pieces and I was afraid it was uh, going down to the engine, but I have uh, removed the engine from the car and, and split it apart and it seems that everything looks fine. Uh, so thanks to Honda for building this <laughs> awesome engine. Just now it's uh, more or less I need to find the time uh, to get the car together uh, for the season again. I will have more or less the same setup, just uh, fixing some, uh, some some minor things with the supercharger. Well, at least it broke on a track where it should yeah, be, Yeah, right? of course. So and, and <laughs> I have had zero issues on the street, even though how hard I drive it but I seems to have some bad omen once I'm at the track because last season I also started with hitting a big curb and uh, broke uh, the rear uh, engine mount so last season was not the best but uh, at least uh, everything is uh, still fine with the car uh, and uh, just put the engine together and and it will be running again okay so should we start talking about the real reason why I'm here today? Yeah, I think so. Your new toy. Yeah, yeah, of course. You, you've really got awesome taste in cars, I mean, proper yeah, driving yeah, cars. Yeah. So tell me a bit about your history with rally cars, because you seem to be very passionate. Yeah, about them. I really like uh, rally cars uh, and mostly old rally cars. I was growing up uh, during the, the 90s. So uh, for me, it's the early and mid 90s cars like uh, the Escort Cosworth, the Evos, uh, the Toyota and the Lancia uh, Delta Integrale and, and those kind of cars that really gets me going. So I've always uh, dreamt about this car in some way, but it was not until uh, the last couple of years that I really got to start thinking about getting myself one. Do and you want it specifically this? Car? Yes. Uh, so this is a 92 Toyota Celica GT4 Carlos Sainz edition. And it was very important for me that it was a Carlos Sainz edition, even though the, the regular GT4 is a very, very nice car as well. But the small things that changes with the Carlos Sainz, like the other 
front bumper, it's another gearbox and some minor things that I really, really wanted. And this is also a limited car. This one is made in 5000. Back in the 90s, you had to make 5000 cars just to be able, able to, to compete. This was Group A. And some years later, it was called, like it's today, VRC. And uh, this is the most successful car that Toyota has competed with. And for me, this car, I had this like a small RC car when I was a kid. I have driven this in like Sega Rally. Okay, Sega Rally, the car after this one, but it's the same livery uh, and so on. And in my opinion, and probably many others, this livery is one of the most iconic rally liveries ever. So even though you don't like cars, or you don't even know what this is, you know you this know livery. livery, yeah. So how, how did you end up buying this one? Did you search for it or did it just come up? Yeah, I searched for a Carlos Sainz for a couple of years. It didn't show up on uh, like the Swedish big uh, site. So I was thinking about uh, importing one from Germany. Most of them that I've seen is right-hand drive. I don't want a right-hand drive car. For me also, it needed to be a white car so I could put this livery on. I was lucky. Uh, so it was actually with the help from my followers on Instagram. Uh, I did an, uh, on my story asking people, is there any Anyone know there's a Carlos Sainz out there? So after a couple of months, some people wrote to me that you should call this guy in Uppsala. Uh, he has one in, in storage. Uh, so after many SMS and phone calls, oh, I've been able to, to buy the car from him. So it has been sitting still for 10 years. When I bought it, it was some minor things that need to be fixed, like a new exhaust, inlet pipes. Uh, the interior of the car was not very, very nice. So I have scouted the whole internet to find the correct parts for the inside. Side. It's, when I bought the car, I thought it was just a regular Celica that you could find parts everywhere. But I realized that one, the Celicas, they are all rusted away. So, so even though the parts that are moved over to this car from, from a regular car is very hard to find. Then you have the GT4 that are even harder to find parts for. And the Carlos Sainz is yeah. more or less impossible guess, yeah. to find the correct part. So, I uh, have had big problems finding the stuff I needed, uh, but now the interior is super mint. I left the shares uh, over to Color Glow here in Sweden that made them look like okay, new. Yeah. And, and uh, otherwise all the plastic parts, everything is right uh, in, inside the car. For me, it's, uh, this is my childhood dream car. Uh, I watch TV and, and I really, really wanted one. For me, it's more the passion about the car, the history, this is the, they won the World Rally Championship with this many years in a row. Uh, like this livery on the car is also very, very oh, special yes. for me. Uh, this is from the exact replica of the 93 Monte Carlo Rally when uh, Didier Oriol, who drove this car and the delivery is based on, uh, did an exceptionally good uh, last uh, stages when uh, it's a very famous quote that he says that he hopes he never has to drive this hard again. So it's an uh, very odd, strange looking car, but it's purpose built for the for the rallies. Um, and it's cool also, pop-up headlights, those yeah, never get no. old. <laughs> pop-up headlights never get old, they have been a little cheesy for a couple of years, but I really think that pop-up headlights coming is coming yes. back. Should we take it out for a spin? Yeah, of course. Cool. I feel the same because uh, once it's in the garage, okay, it looks kind of cool, but the Lotus is pretty special as well. But once you get it on the road, it feels like it yeah, belongs here. Yeah, yeah. And when I was in front of you, yeah, felt like a rally car following me. <laughs> <laughs> but one strange thing, we are not big people, and it's yes. no headroom at all. Is it because of the sunroof, maybe? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Uh, but as you recognize, it feels kind of. Uh, not too bumpy, okay, it's a little bit hard. It's, uh, the, the Carlos Sainz has different dampers than the, than the regular GT4. And I'm running with uh, Eibach lowering springs on them. Okay. Uh, but it's uh, feeling yeah. ki kind of solid. I love that it's so loud. Yeah, it's, uh, I know, I, I should have put the, the second uh, muffler on, but this is a car that you drive uh, on these kind of roads and so on. So for, it's not worth you it. You know, yeah. it's not worth it. Hard 
as well. So something in between. I think the gearbox is lovely. The, the steering feel is very, very uh, nice. But, but it feels, feels kind of solid. It's an almost 30 years old car, so uh, it doesn't feel like it's now. somewhere between 280 300 I think is pretty That's fair to say one, right? yeah yeah it's the, the stock one is 210 and then I did a three inch exhaust uh, I have a um, front mounted intercooler still instead of the water uh, intercooler that is uh, standard on, on uh, the Carlos Sainz it moves pretty well it feels punchy yeah yeah Plans do you have with it? Uh, my plans is just to getting every single detail in mint condition. I'm going with an 18 inch wheel uh, on the summer tires, uh, the summer wheels, so it's going to be a compromotive tire uh, wheel uh, that looks super on the car with the turbo fans and so on. So I'm really looking forward for that one. So probably I would maybe need to have some coilovers or, or something to get okay. the fitment right. Uh, and then I'm I don't exactly know which one I would choose, but probably the Tain or something of the other Japanese brands, uh, so you get the, the, the same feeling of everything. Do you still have the same feeling that you had when you were a kid, when you come to work and you see the yeah, car? Yeah, every time I, I open the door uh, <laughs> at my work, every day I see this car, and I'm even though I had a bad morning, everything goes away yeah. once I see this car so uh, of course it's I pro the sight of this is never going to be uh, boring so so to end this video yeah do you have one favorite thing about the car oh it's very hard to say one thing uh, but I must say the look from where we are sitting now it's something very very special that you no cars today will have these weird bumps yes. on the hood and the scoops and the all the small things probably if someone tried to make this today it wouldn't be legal for some reason if you crash yes, with exactly. someone and then of course the the, the flip-up headlights make it just <laughs> so damn cool